few first-person shooter games are as revered as the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare trilogy. Hi, I'm Kyle with the Leaderboard, and this is our Call of Duty Modern Warfare timeline. Now, because the makers of the Modern Warfare series seem to think plot twists don't have to be limited to in-game storylines, we want you to know we're well aware that the most recently revealed COD title is going to be Call of Duty Modern Warfare. No number, but is the fourth game in the series. This is distinctly different from Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which is the first game in the Modern Warfare series. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was then followed by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, it's, it's a weird number system, but hey, it's still not as confusing as the COD Zombie storyline, which if you do want to learn the COD Zombie storyline, we did simplify that and put that into a video that you can check out, but you're most likely here because you want to hear the Modern Warfare storyline. So let's get into it. The events in the Call of Duty Modern Warfare series are loosely informed by actual historical events. And by loosely, I mean very loosely. In the basic sense that World War II laid the groundwork for a Cold War between Russia and the US that lasted from the mid-1940s to the early 1990s. This was a competition of sorts between two of the world's largest political powerhouses and was at least partially inspired by a looming possibility of nuclear warfare between two countries. Further, events such as 1986's Chernobyl nuclear accident really did happen, but because this is a modern warfare timeline and not a history textbook, we won't go too deep into the nuance of all that stuff. If you want to take a look, it's in a book. Further, the first two games in the Modern Warfare series don't always reference specific dates, so some of this timeline involves piecing together a sequence of events based on context cues. And so it begins. If you're a fan of HBO, you know the Chernobyl disaster took place on April 26, 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the nearby town of Pripyat, Ukraine, when a faultily constructed nuclear reactor went haywire. More than 30 people perished due to the effects of this incident, which also left deadly pockets of radiation in the surrounding areas for years to come. John Price, who was then a young lieutenant, as the British like to pronounce lieutenant, would later refer to this event as Christmas for bad guys. Since the disaster allowed them to get their hands on nuclear material even up to a decade later. One such bad guy was Imran Zakayev, an extremely powerful Russian leader. The British government had authorized an assassination order on Zakayev, and Price, under the command of Captain Macmillan, was tasked with infiltrating Pripyat in order to undertake this effort. The two men managed to get a vantage point on Zakayev and his associates. As the bad guys began their exchange, Price managed to blow Zakayev's arm off with a sniper rifle, but there was never a confirmed kill. 15 years later. Fast forward to 2011, a civil war in Russia pits government loyalists against ultra-nationalist rebels. In the Middle East, British intelligence is keeping its eyes on Khalid al-Assad, a ruthless military commander tightening his grip on the region. Price is now a captain in the British Special Air Services, or SAS, and John Soap McTavish, fresh out of selection, joins Price's regiment. What the hell kind of name is Soap, eh? Part 1, Zakayev's Influence. 2011, Day 1. Soap's first mission, the actual date of which is not known but is referred to as Day 1, puts him on an Estonian freighter ship near the Bering Strait. There, his team finds a shipment of cargo with Arabic words on it but is only able to secure a manifest before a Russian team attacks the ship. The SAS team escapes. The same day in the Middle East, al-Assad shoots a world leader, President Yasir al-Fulani, on live television. 2011, Day 2. The next day, the SAS team goes on a mission to rescue Nikolai, an informant in the ultra-nationalist camp in Russia, who also supplied the intel about the Estonian cargo ship. The mission is successful, though they do lose some people in their efforts. In the meantime, Sergeant Paul Jackson and his group of United States Marines comprising the First Force Recon, under the leadership of General Shepard, is tasked with taking down al-Assad at a TV station where he is supposedly broadcasting. The mission is a bust though, when they arrive to discover al-Assad is not broadcasting live, but in fact playing a recording. I mean, I know I get mad when I find out things are pre-recorded, but this, this is a whole new level. 2011, Day 3. Sergeant Jackson's team gets a lead on al-Assad's position, learning that he may have obtained a Russian warhead. No big deal. They join an assault on his presumed location, weakening the opposition's defenses. But when they receive confirmation of a nuclear device in al-Assad's palace, they are forced to retreat and assist in the evacuation of the city. 
a friendly copter en route to the next location goes down. Jackson and several other members of the USMC try to perform a search and rescue to save their fellow troops. Miles away, a man named Vladimir Makarov makes a decision that will change the course of history. Makarov is Zakhaev's prodigy, and he's the one who gives orders for all Assad to detonate a nuclear explosion as a young Russian radical named Yuri watches on. These two men will each have significant roles throughout the rest of the trilogy. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the first game in the series, makes little note of them. The massive nuclear blast causes tremendous devastation, taking the USMC team down as well as numerous aircraft and and buildings. Sergeant Paul Jackson is killed in action, and it's apparent that all local members of the First Force Recon have been killed as well. They are just a handful of the 30,000 troops who died in the blast. 2011, Day 4. Price, Soap, and fellow SAS team members infiltrate Azerbaijan to try to locate Al-Assad at a safe house thanks to coordinates they received from Nikolai. They track Al-Assad down, but he won't give any information about how he got the warhead. However, thanks to a call to Al-Assad's cell phone, Price realizes that Al-Assad was working with Zakhaev, whom Price shot that fateful day at Chernobyl 15 years earlier. Once they have the information they need, Price casually executes Al-Assad. <laughs> Eight hours later, the SAS team in Azerbaijan faces a counterattack from Al-Assad's followers. Staff Sergeant Griggs arrives to help them to escape the vicinity. 2011, Day 5. A combined SAS-USMC joint operation brings the team to southern Russia. They believe that if they can track down Zakhaev's son, they can make him shed light on his father's whereabouts. Sergeant Kamarov, a Russian loyalist, leads the team to him, but before they can get any information, Zakhaev's son shoots himself in the head. Day 6. Enraged by the death of his son, Zakhaev commands all US and British forces to leave Russia and says that there will be consequences if they refuse to comply. In the meantime, Price directs the Joint Squad to overtake the missile launch facility lest it be used to destroy the world. At the start of the mission, Staff Sergeant Griggs gets separated from the others and captured, but they quickly recover him. As the groups head into the facility, they realize two missiles have been launched towards the US, and the only way to stop them is to quickly acquire the control room and enter the abort codes. If they fail, the weapons could kill more than 40 million people in the United States. It's down to the wire, but the team successfully enters the codes, saving the United States and causing the missiles to drop into the ocean. However, when they escape the facility in a thrilling car chase, the entire team is in capacitated by an exploding oil tanker. Zakhaev and two guards emerge to make sure they're dead, killing Griggs as he tries to drag a wounded soap to safety. As Zakhaev methodically executes the downed SAS members, loyalist forces led by Kamarov shoot down a Soviet helicopter behind Zakhaev, distracting him and his men long enough for Price to pass a gun along to Soap. Soap then uses this gun to kill Zakhaev and company, moments before Kamarov comes to their aid. Part 2, Zakhaev's Legacy, 2011 to 2016. While the exact dates of the events that followed aren't specified, we do know that they all occurred between Zakhaev's death and the start of the events of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which takes place in 2016. Zakhaev is now regarded as a martyr throughout Russia, and in his absence, his protege Makarov has stepped up as the leader of the ultranationalists. In the meantime, American, Australian, Canadian, and British forces have come together to develop Task Force 141, comprised of military leaders including Price and Soap. It also includes General Shepard, who led the USMC troops during the devastating nuclear blast of 2011. Operation Kingfish begins on October 8, 2013. It's a joint operation where Task Force 141 and members of a team called Delta Force attack a facility belonging to Makarov. Operation Kingfish turns out to be a trap, leaving Soap wounded and Price MIA. Also, sometime between 2013 and 2016, the Russian ultranationalist party defeats the loyalists unifying the country. Tensions between Russia and the United States remain high. And that brings us to the events of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. August 10th, 2016, Day 1. Private Joseph Allen of the 1st Battalion Ranger Regiment is training in Afghanistan. Shepard tells Sergeant Foley, Allen's commanding officer, that he's looking for the best of the best for a special opportunity. After Shepard sees Allen on the ground working against the opposition forces, Shepard recruits him for Task Force 141. August 11th, 2016, Day 2. After the Russians obtain a fallen satellite, Soap and fellow operative Gary Roach Sanderson infiltrate an airbase in Russia to attempt to confiscate data concerning the satellite's attitude control system, otherwise known as an ACS unit, which could otherwise give the Russians sensitive intel about their intelligence operations. When their positions are compromised, they blow up explosives they've planted in the base and escape in a badass snowmobile chase. 
August 12, 2016, Day 3. Disturbing content notice going forward. Alan assumes the new identity of Alexei Borodin. Now deep undercover, he joins the ultra-nationalist leader Makarov, who takes him and the rest of his men to the Zakaev International Airport in Moscow. Before emerging from the elevator, Makarov gives them the succinct order. Remember, no Russia. Emerging from the elevator, Makarov leads a massacre at the airport in a day that will forever live in infamy as the moment Activision decided it needed to include at least one extremely controversial scene per game to generate hype. It's only revealed later that Yuri the Young radicalized associate of Zakhaev's who witnessed the nuclear detonation had begun questioning his allegiance and made an effort to try to stop this massacre. However, Makarov found out about this effort to stop him, shooting him and leaving him for dead. Even as he was rapidly losing blood, Yuri attempted to stop Makarov until he passed out. Once the act of terrorism is complete, Makarov shoots Alan, revealing that he knew Alan was working for the CIA the entire time. Makarov's objective was to frame the American for the act of terrorism to spark public unrest in the name of the ultranationalist cause. And it worked. Makarov leaves the scene of the massacre with the words, The American thought he could deceive us. When they find that body, all of Russia will cry for war. And that they did. August 13th, 2016, day four. Outside of Makarov's camp, the only ones who know the truth about the setup are Task Force 141. As they predict, this event ignites a major international conflict between the Russians and the Americans, which later is known as the Russo-American War, or World War III. They trace one of the bullets used in the massacre to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to someone named Alejandro Rojas aka Alex the Red. They're able to track Rojas' assistant, who thanks to some enhanced interrogation from Soap and fellow 141 member Simon Ghost Riley, provides the team with information in a scene that would make me talk in a higher pitch voice, if you get what I mean. Soap soon captures Rojas by uh, jumping through a window and tackling him off of a house in one of the most badass scenes I've seen, and Rojas provides information that the person Makarov hates most is a prisoner at a Russian gulag. Task Force 141, which is believed to have been tracked by intelligence gained by the ACS unit, escapes local militia in Brazil with the help of Soap's old friend Nikolai. Soon after, they embark on a mission to rescue the mysterious Prisoner 627 for more information, enlisting the help of the 6th Fleet and the U.S. Navy SEALs. In the meantime, U.S. Army Ranger Private James Ramirez, Sergeant Foley, Corporal Dunn, and their fellow troops assist civilians after a surprise attack on Washington, D.C. by Russian forces. Since Shepard's team is out of the country, he takes command of this unit. August 14th, 2016, Day 5. Force 141 successfully raids the Gulag with the help of the Navy SEALs and comes face to face with Prisoner 627. Plot twist, it's your old friend, Captain Price. Against Shepard's orders to focus on killing Makarov, Captain Price takes command of Task Force 141, leading them on a mission to attack a Russian submarine base where Price has a plan to end the war today. He infiltrates a nuclear sub and to everyone's horror launches a ballistic missile towards the US with the capacity to kill more than 30,000 people. But Price hasn't gone to the dark side. He set the missile to detonate in the atmosphere. It destroys a satellite as well as the International Space Station, interrupting international comm systems Systems, resulting in a temporary stop to the fighting in Washington, D.C. It has the happy side effect of also saving Ramirez, Foley, Dunn, and the Army Rangers. This group then retakes the White House, which was then occupied by Russian ultranationalists. The invasion of D.C. is repelled, and all Price had to do was murder a couple astronauts in cold blood. You now, make an omelet, you gotta break a few eggs. Meanwhile, Shepard receives a blank check from the U.S. Secretary of Defense to do whatever it takes to kill Makarov. August 15th, 2016, Day 6. Shepard suggests that Makarov must be at one of two locations, at his estate on the Georgia-Russia border, or conducting an arms deal at the Boneyard, an abandoned vehicle disposal yard in Afghanistan. Roach, Ghost, and several other members of Task Force 141 head to the estate while Soap and Price head to the Boneyard. The task force team doesn't find Makarov at the estate, but is able to fend off his forces long enough to copy a massive cache of intel from Makarov's computer. As the ultranationalist forces begin to overwhelm the team, Ghost drags a wounded roach to the extraction point, where General Shepard waits. In a top 10 anime betrayals for the ages, Shepard caps Roach and Ghost and leaves his elite Shadow Company soldiers to dispose of their bodies. Shepard, whose legacy has been tainted by this leadership of the USMC troops that perished in the nuclear attack, has been plotting ever since that to orchestrate World War III, usher in a new age of American jingoism, and be seen as a war hero. 
Why, you ask? Because he believes it will prevent another disaster from happening again. It doesn't really make sense, but that's why he's the bad guy here, guys. Having disposed of the evidence of his wrongdoing, Shepard takes his leave and says one loose end, but he still has one more to tie up. At the Boneyard, Shepard has unleashed an attack on Price and Soap, and Makarov in a further attempt to cover his tracks. The three groups, Price and Soap, Shepard's Shadow Company, and Makarov's men, engage in a three-way battle in which Price convinces Makarov to reveal the location of Shepard's secret base. Cite Hotel Bravo, reasoning that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Soon after, the two are able to escape a Nikolai's plane, but thanks to Shepard's influence, are marked as war criminals. Makarov is able to escape as well, and also goes into hiding. August 16th, 2016, Day 7. Price and Soap have turned their attention to Shepard and embark on a suicide mission to take him down at Site Hotel Bravo in Afghanistan. In a showdown reminiscent of the SAS-USMC joint operation Last Stand against Sakaev several years prior, Price and Soap's efforts to kill Shepard end in a hot pursuit, except this time in boats. Shepard escapes into a chopper, which Price manages to shoot down just as he and Soap are pulled over a waterfall. Soap regains consciousness and moves towards the wreckage of Shepard's helicopter to find the general waiting. Soap attacks the seemingly injured Shepard, who quickly turns Soap's own knife against him. With Soap now bleeding with a knife in his chest, Shepard prepares to finish him off, only to be attacked by Price. The two brawl, but Shepard gets the upper hand, which is honestly pretty impressive for an old guy. And just as it looks like Price is about to die at Shepard's hands, Soap takes the knife out of his chest and throws it into Shepard's eye, killing him instantly. Soon after, Nikolai lands nearby and helps Price move the gravely wounded Soap to his helicopter. Price says they need to get Soap somewhere safe, and Nikolai says he knows a place. This winds down the events of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Part 3, Peace Efforts. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 picks up right where the last title left off. August 17th, 2016. Nikolai gets Price and Soap to a safe house in India. This is the first time Price and Soap meet Yuri, a Russian loyalist with a decidedly shady past, the true depth of which is unknown to all at this time. However, Nikolai assures them that Yuri hates Makarov more than anyone he knows. In the meantime, the invasion of the US continues and the Russians have launched an all-out assault on New York City, where Sergeant Derek Frost Westbrook, along with squad leader Sandman, second-in-command Truck, and designated Christmas hater Grinch are tasked with taking down a jamming tower set atop the New York Stock Exchange as part of Delta Force. Upon completion, they join with the Navy SEALs to infiltrate a Russian submarine outside of New York, ultimately turning the vehicle's missiles against its own fleet and stopping the invasion. October 3rd, 2016. Russian President Boris Forshevsky is en route to an international peace conference in Hamburg, Germany, when the ultranationalists hijack his plane. The hijackers take the president in an effort to interrogate him for his nuclear launch codes. However, a team on the ground is able to rescue his daughter, who was also on the plane during the hijacking. October 5th, 2016. Now in Africa, Soap, Prince, and Yuri have tracked the origin of the chemical weapons Makarov plans on using to Sierra Leone. They witness a shipment in action, but are unable to stop the weapons from leaving. Finding a shipping manifest, the team learns that Makarov is planning on launching a series of attacks across Europe. October 6th, 2016. Upon learning of a Russian terrorist threat in London, the SAS team seeks to neutralize it. However, they are unable to stop a chemical attack when a truck explodes. Several other major European cities soon report similar incidences. In Hamburg, Delta Force rescues the U.S. Vice President from a sudden attack on the peace conference by Russian ultranationalists. October 8, 2016, Price calls his former commanding officer Macmillan, now a directing officer in the SAS, and asks for intel, saying he owes him one for saving his life in Pripyat, all those years ago. Macmillan's intel leads Price, Soap, and Yuri to track down an arms dealer in Somalia. The dealer tells them the whereabouts of Makarov's bomb maker Volk before Price executes him as vengeance for his involvement in the international attacks. Nikolai's chopper is shot down as he attempts to extract them from the mission, so they are forced to escape through the city. October 9th, 2016. Guided by the intel, the Delta Force team tracks down Volk in Paris and apprehends him after a chase through the city and some major property damage. They knock over the Eiffel Tower, y'all, and it's gonna take something miraculous to put that thing back together. October 10th, 2016. During Delta Force's interrogation of Volk, Sandman offers Price insight on where to find Makarov. Price and his team head to Prague, where they rendezvous with Kamarov, the loyalist leader from the first game, and his resistance. There, they'll attempt to snipe Makarov during a meeting at a hotel. 
October 11, 2016. The sniper team is fully deployed in Prague only to discover that Makarov has set them up, capturing Kamarov and rigging the hotel, along with the church serving as Soap and Yuri's vantage point to blow. In the commotion, Soap hears Makarov refer to Yuri as an old friend, just as Makarov's explosives blast them both off the roof of the church. Nikolai takes Soap to a safe house as he's been gravely injured for the third time in three games, which I'd say wear a helmet, but this time it's for real. During Soap's dying moments, he shares with Price and Nikolai that Makarov knows Yuri. Price then kicks Yuri down a flight of stairs, a reasonable reaction, demanding to know his relationship with Makarov. Yuri shares that he was, in fact, a close associate of Zakaev's and Makarov's, and was actually there on the day of Price's unsuccessful assassination attempt. However, we watch Makarov's quest for power descend into madness, culminating in events such as the detonation of the nuclear weapon and the terrorist massacre at the airport in Moscow, which he attempted to stop. Price believes that Yuri's alliances have shifted and the two do continue to work together. October 12, 2016. Upon infiltrating Makarov's facility near Prague, Yuri and Price learn that Makarov's team is working to capture President Volshevsky's daughter, Elena, in an effort to leverage her so that Volshevsky will share the nuclear launch codes. October 13, 2016. Nikolai contacts Delta Force about the ultranationalist plan to kidnap Elena. They embark on a rescue mission in Berlin, but are unable to get her before the Russians capture her. Frost, for some reason, is never seen again. October 14, 2016. Delta Force and Task Force 141 are able to track Elena's whereabouts to a Siberian diamond mine, which they infiltrate, rescuing both her and Vorshevsky before the Russians are able to obtain the nuclear launch codes. In an effort to provide time for Price and Yuri to get to safety, Sandman, Truck, and Grinch sacrifice their own lives, holding off Makarov's men as the mine collapses. October 14, 2016 to sometime in January 21, 2017. With President Voshevsky safe, Russia and the United States declare peace. However, Makarov remains on the run. January 21, 2017. Price and Yuri, aided by Nikolai, track down Makarov to a hotel in the Arabian Peninsula and lay down a two-man siege on it armed with juggernaut suits and machine guns. Our boys ascend the tower to prevent Makarov from escaping, culminating with Price leaping aboard Makarov's helicopter, killing both pilots with his bare hands and crashing it onto the hotel's glass roof. Makarov emerges from the wreckage and comes close to killing Price until Yuri makes the save by shooting his former friend. Makarov is still a able to quickly kill Yuri, but his distraction gives Price enough time to finally kill Makarov by strangling him, wrapping a wire around his throat, and smashing him through a glass roof, hanging him. That's how you confirm a kill. As police sirens wail in the background, he takes out a cigar and lights it like at the beginning of the game, marking the end of the sequence of events that make up the original trilogy. As for what happens in the new Modern Warfare, your guess is as good as mine. You know how these reboots go, there might be some stuff that's familiar and other stuff that's completely fresh. The important thing is that Captain Price is back, and that's all I need to hook me in. And if this video hooked you in, then you should subscribe to the leaderboard. We're a million players strong and counting. And I've been your host, Kyle. See you next time.